you know, it's a unexciting truth for Chiefs fans. I hate to be the messenger, but I do think the dynasty is over. I mean, not yet, but you can see the beginning of the end. Look at any great CEO of totally cool functioning companies across the world right now. What's destroying the workforce, Seth Kaiser? What's ruining this country? Maybe this world's productivity right now. What's the number one culprit that is driving our beautiful corporations in this country straight into the ground? Original sin? Working from home, oh. and the Kansas City Chiefs are doing these virtual off seasons again. Hold on, they did a lot of this last year. Lots of companies are working from home and doing things virtually, and it's not been a problem. Does it seem like the news stories I've been reading? All right, everybody, holding pattern. The dynasty's a maybe. This is KC Sports Network, proudly presented by M Prize Bank. It's only weird games only done virtually here on KC Sports Network. <laughs> At least at this point, it'd be really a pretty big challenge to get all of us in the same spot on a regular basis. Uh, I'm Joshua Briscoe with Seth Kaiser. Hey, right now, it's just two thirds of us in the virtual spot at the same time. Nate Taylor will join in progress today. Uh, but Seth and I are going to go ahead and uh, and get things kicked off here. Seth, I don't think we had what we would call earth-shattering breaking news since the, the last episode of this show. How how the last several days treated you? It's kind of a weird, it's weird now being on this schedule where we don't do a show Friday to through Monday, but we're here now Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's like I get right. I get my my vitamin Seth just in a three-day period in the middle of the week every week. You know? <laughs> Frankly, there's a little less of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Vitamin Seth. The one, the one vitamin that if you take less, it's actually better for you. Actually, that's probably a lot of vitamins like that. If we're being it's, honest, it's like, almost, you know, it's, it's you every vitamin. And eventually, it's every vitamin. Yeah, you don't need a giant horse pill of vitamin C every day. You could, you could do with a little less. Um, no, I. It, it's been a, it's been a quiet last few days. I, I, I've kind of had the panic button starting to hit. The draft starts next Thursday. Mm -hmm. And I still have like eight receivers I want to get through. So I'm starting to try to churn through them in, in earnest. We have finally gotten done with like the, the kind of surefire first rounders and guys that might not fall to the chiefs. And now we're kind of looking through some of the guys that will probably be there at 32. And that always includes like, you know, no, this player is the only one who's going to be good. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's hard to say, but it, it, people are really, people are way more passionate about second and third round receivers than they are about first round receivers. Everyone's like, oh, Brian Thomas Jr. Yeah, yeah, he's good. He's good. But Javon Baker is going to set the league on fire. And I'm like, he might. I don't know. But it's like, but I also, you know, oh, hey, I kind of like Xavier Le 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 a little Leggett a little bit. And they're like, oh, he sucks. It's like, well, oh, yeah. Okay, so well, what a dummy I am, I guess. Yeah, it's like I, I didn't know. I'm sorry. Like when it's like, oh, I wouldn't hate this pick. Like, no, you pick him before the second round. You are, you are messing up, bud. It's like, I, I don't know enough about draft Twitter to know the rules. And so it's like I've walked into a dinner party where like everyone kind of knows like the ins and outs of things. It's kind of like you walk into a, you walk into a church that you've never been in before, which even for a guy like me is a terrifying experience. Scary. Like objectively, no matter where you, you start from. Yeah, you genuinely don't know. It's like, you know, you never know if there's going to be like that moment. So like, everyone reach under a bucket and grab a snake. We're going to do it. You're like, oh, no. <laughs> like, I'm in the wrong church. And so that's me on draft Twitter right now. But other than that, now it's been pretty quiet. Like, not a whole lot of new things going on other than the usual offseason shenaniganry. Um, I think the reason for that, not to just use the parlance of the excellent KC Sports Network draft guide that you can now get now available. Um, I was going to say wherever you get your draft guides. That's not true. It's a very specific link, and you can get it in the descriptions of these videos and podcasts. Go check that out if you haven't yet. I think it's nice to have my guy. I think everybody just kind of likes, yeah. like, I want to be the guy who was higher on Rasheed Rice before the draft came around, or I want to be the guy who was higher on Sky Moore in the second round. This plucky little underdog receiver. Like, I right. think there's something to that. And at the very least for the big three, nobody has decided to be the guy that thinks Marvin Harrison Jr. isn't good at football. 
Like, yeah. it's just that battle's not worth fighting. But, oh, buddy, can you do it with every quarterback all the time? You could do it. Yep. You can do it from from the first round. You can literally do it from number one overall to Mr. Irrelevant. You can always have a degree of outcomes for quarterbacks. But everybody's like, yeah, no, those three receivers are going to be good. The next three receivers are probably going to be pretty good. But you know who I really like? The receiver who's going to go 12th. Like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, like, that's that's kind of part of where that's yeah. the carrot of the draft process, right? Is like you want to uncover something that that isn't that isn't totally obvious without making yourself look like a fool. Um, I'll cross promo. I don't know if you have, a, have had a chance to read it yet. Uh, Alec Lewis, formerly covering the Royals for the athletic now covering the Minnesota Vikings for the athletic. Um, he, uh, he does a tremendous job. I constantly tell him that I think he's written some of the best pros of this century about Mike Matheny using uh, spray on sunscreen to stop his chair from squeaking. That's where Alec, that's where Alec really finds his work. Uh, but he had a great piece about the study of draft strategies over the years and going back to the sort of fundamental, like, yeah. I'm going to say truth. I'm going to say truth. The fundamental truth that more picks further back end up being more valuable than your big trade ups and, and big swings. And the reasons right. that that hasn't been always treated as an objective truth. It's a great read over there in The Athletic. Um, I, I just have been thinking about it for the last few hours. And, and I think that we're also in that space now, too, where it's like, well, yeah, you can go and take your big swing. But if that guy isn't the, quote, like automatic difference maker, you're suddenly in quite a bit of trouble. Yes. And that's really, you know, the, the draft is in some ways a crapshoot. It's like a it's like an organized crapshoot where the sheer volume of work that goes into it means that yes you are more likely to get great players in the first round than you are in the seventh round you're more likely to get good players in the second round than the sixth round but it, it kind of i mean it's not those percentages aren't nearly as high as people think i always say you get three contributors out of a draft i'm happy now you know, that it all varies, right? If one of them's a superstar, you can get away with the other two being, you know, rotational guys. If one of them, if one of them is good, you need another one to be good and then another one to be kind of a core specialty board. Three contributors each draft, year after year after year after year, you'll be okay. Now, sometimes you do like what Brett Veach did in the 2022 draft. And it's like, look, 17 contributors. And that's awesome. But you can't necessarily count on it. And what's great about the draft the the person who tweeted out once upon a time that the draft is just fan fiction for men yeah. is it's so spot on really because what you get to do and this is this is everyone's right this is why right now people you know ad mitchell has gone from like ooh you know maybe kind of a sleeper guy to just like you know he might actually have the highest ceiling of any receiver in this draft it's like no i think one of those first three guys has the highest ceiling of anyone <laughs> in this draft like i i think marvin Har marvin harrison jr has the highest ceiling Call me crazy because his ceiling is one of the greatest like 10 receivers in history. I think A.D. Mitchell, I like his film, but I don't know if his ceiling is that. But we all, what you get to do is you get to fan fiction it. You get to imagine if all of a player's strengths just translate seamlessly into the league and none of their weaknesses get emphasized in the league so like sky Moore, for example just killer releases smooth guy doesn't have to lose a lot of speed when he changes direction you know yeah he struggles getting through contact a little bit but you know what they can work on that in the league or what happens is that struggle through contact can be downright dispositive on a few too many routes and the other stuff doesn't translate quite as well. And his lack of speed, kind of the lack of burst and quickness gets you. And then suddenly now, hey, I I, I still believe in Sky more just a little bit. I, not like to be like a star, but like to be like a contributor. I just I, I see those releases and I'm you like, you can do it, buddy. You have Sky Moore, and I have Kadarius Tony, and since he's not here, Nate has Justin Ross. Yeah, we're all embarrassed a little bit, but that's just how it is. And so it's so much fun to 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 project those things, and this with this wide receiver class especially because I'm like I'm six or seven deep now in 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 six. wide receiver guys six that you've published seven that yep. you've watched, and I'm I'm halfway through writing about Xavier Leggett's film which is a really interesting journey in and of itself so that'll be up by thursday and i really want one more to be up i want polk i can't remember his first name right now but it's spelled p-o-l-k i'm a J i'm a professional guys um it's okay I, this isn't really I, 
<laughs> it's not really your. You don't. You don't proclaim to be a draft. That's what the, that's what the draft guys. I don't. I don't. I also don't proclaim to be great with names. Yeah, I can watch someone's true. film and I could say, "Hey, this guy. These are the traits that I see." That's I can do that. But like, they might as well be named player one, player two, player three. And I'm sorry for that. I really am. It's You're not, very okay. You're very important as human beings. I just don't know you. Like you are never, you think my last name's pronounced Kisor. And that's okay. I don't take it personally. I told a judge once, well, Your Honor, it's my fault on account of spelling my name wrong. Which, by the way, she did not think was funny. Um, that really, every time you tell that story, and we're definitely in double digits now, it surprised me more every time. Every time I'm more, I'm more absolutely bamboozled by that. <laughs> Speaking of bamboozling, I'm hearing now that we, uh, we are being joined. We are being joined right now by The Athletic's own Nate Taylor. Uh, you can follow him on Twitter, at ByNateTaylor, and you can see him live right now, right here on the Only Weird Games podcast. Nate, back to you. Hi, yes, Frank. Uh, coming to you live from Overland Park. Uh, it is a wonderful day. It rained a little bit earlier. Um, I also don't know what the ceiling is for Justin Ross and I would like to hear it and see it for myself uh back to you Josh guys I, I go up oh, hold on we, we let's go up live to Minnesota right now to Seth Kisor for an update on something Mr. Kisor well today we're just looking outside and we're observing the we're observing it's raining a little bit here but it's not frozen it's kind of weird it's coming down in water so that's oh, freaking me out just a little bit, fellas. That stuff's supposed to come down real pretty in crystals. No, what I was going to say is just so people know this, because I think it's kind of fun to look behind the scenes. And I think there's some, maybe it's irony. I can't remember exactly how you define irony. We had a whole bit about off-season lessons ready to go. And yeah. we're literally not even going to get to that bit before That's Nate true. joined. We had a whole bit ready on like I was going to interrupt with offseason lessons and, and and do a whole thing. And it, there's there's like a purity to what is happening to offseason lessons that we didn't even get to the bit that we were going to do about offseason lessons. It's it's truly how you know that none of our bits are like really, really planned because that's absolutely right. the truth. And Seth, just to go ahead and take us one level deeper in this inception, I had before I saw that Nate was was here from Tucker in the chat, I was just going to pull the lever and just get get us a Troy Franklin because the conversation had led us there. We didn't need the bit anymore. So I was oh, just yeah. going to I was just going to shift over. But here we are now. Now we can just we can we can try to rat a tat tat our way through all the things today we just had a lovely little conversation of setting this up and talking about draft priors and Alec Lewis's excellent story in your publication Nate up on the athletic.com um required reading leading in the draft yes. season right along with the cases and draft guy which I've already talked about all the links are in the thingies already woo woo so uh Nate kind of uh, uh popping in mid midstream here let's let's do go ahead and try to to hop in on the things that we learned a little bit about this week we hadn't heard from Andy Reid Patrick Mahomes or Nick Bolton in quite a while. And uh, all three of them spoke as the Chiefs got their offseason programs going uh, this week. The The thing about it, though, is that nobody's really in Kansas City. Everybody's operating virtually right now, which is why it was a little bit misleading, I thought, when some national NFL folks tweeted that Rasheed Rice is participating virtually in Chiefs offseason programs right now. Yeah, uh, Candy Reed said Every wide receiver is is doing. Uh, I, I believe uh, Nick Bolton said he's in Arizona right now. Uh -huh. um, Patrick Mahomes is in Texas with a lot of the pass catchers. So that part in and of itself isn't noteworthy. We can talk about both of those guys talking about Rasheed Rice, or we can start with them going through some of the stuff going on in Dallas right now, Nate. But you're there for all the pressers asking questions, figuring out if Nick Bolton was going to make $25 million per year this offseason or not. What did you think was most interesting from the, I would say, official start of the 2024 season for the Chiefs? Yes, Jim. Yes, we have <laughs> these statements uh, I, I, I believe you said something about receivers. Um, what I have prepared, uh, what's on the teleprompter for me is to give you the quote from Nick Bolton regarding the possibility <laughs> of a contract extension. Jim, here's Nick Bolton's yesterday quote. I've been in the state of Missouri going on seven years now, so it would definitely feel like home or definitely feels like home. Excuse me, uh, audience. Uh, the fans, the community, they've been open arms since I got here as an 18-year-old. Staying here would be a blessing. So he clearly thinks Arrowhead Stadium is going to be around for a while. Um, <laughs> would be a dream come true 
if we could get that mm. done in the foreseeable future in the realm of around $17 million a year. That's my oh. interjection, not his quotes. Uh, continue with his quote. Would be interject into my abdomen there. <laughs> I am doubled over. But I'm just trying to put my best foot forward, have our defense pick up where we left off last season and not regress. Just trying to get better than we were last year as it starts in two weeks from now. Uh, when he says two weeks from now, that means the physical part of the offseason program starting. Um, yeah, um, that is the big news today, uh, or I should say yesterday from, from the start of the Chiefs 2024 campaign, Josh. Um, Nick Bolton is looking very, very soon in the foreseeable future of the possibility of signing a contract extension. Now, um, we did not talk about this before the show. Or do you want me to say something about the receivers? <laughs> I Right now, I want the audio-only audience to know that Seth started performing seppuku <laughs> shortly after you said $17 million per. I like Nick Bolton, guys. Seth, could you, could you afford a bigger sword, or do you need to save up to pay Nick Bolton? <laughs> I was gonna, yeah. I was gonna buy a bigger sword, but yeah. I mean, you know, it, it's it's like it's written is, in Deuteronomy. Ten percent of every paycheck goes to pay Jeez. Nick Bolton. Just, <laughs> I've been saving up for this my entire life. My first drive I got at Lever, my first job I got at Lever Super Value in Valley City, North Dakota, and you know, I got that first paycheck. I was getting paid like four fifty an hour, give or take, and uh, you know, I that ten percent. You know, you had FICA. And then you had Social Security, you needed everything, which is Social Security and FICA, but you know, whatever. Your federal tax, your state tax, and Nick Bolton's future contract, which is interesting because Nick Bolton would have been maybe like one at the time. But uh, yeah. You've always been great with money. I've often said that. And uh, you can subscribe to the Chief of the North newsletter for $12 a year, knowing that two of those dollars go directly to Nick, Nick Bolton. Bolton. Yeah. Uh, so that was a noteworthy part that I think we've covered in turn and uh, appropriately for the news that it was. Let's talk about the receiver stuff real okay, quick. Let's talk fine. about let's talk about Andy Reid talking about Rasheed Rice here for the first time too. I've got the quotes on that that I'll I'll go through and we can kind of we can roll with whatever we think is noteworthy here. Rasheed Rice is also being sued by in civil suits by multiple um, members of the accident. Members of my victims of victims was the word I was looking for. Um, but so that came out shortly thereafter. But uh, Andy Reid had a part in his opening statement yesterday where he says, as far as Rasheed Rice goes in his situation, I'm leaving that like we've done most of these. I had parenthetically in that moment, I did get a little bummed that we are in most of these territory. Like just every off season, there's something kind of like this. Um, I don't, sorry, I'm already editorializing. I don't think that's necessary. I'm not saying the chiefs foster this environment, but it's like every year, every off season, there's some story about what are we, what, what, what are we covering in the criminal sphere? Well, it just kind of bummed me out. You're saying that, are you saying that Uzis aren't in the backseat of your car, Josh? Are you not, saying that? Not regularly. No. Um, I mean, yeah, like that's not even the one I was thinking of. And it's just, there's a couple of, I don't know. So anyway, Andy Reid, uh, I'm leaving like we've done that with, uh, we've done most of these just for the law enforcement part of it to take place. And then we'll go from there with that. I have had an opportunity to talk to Rishi and I'm not going to obviously get into that, but that part, that part has been gone through. Um, later, Reid was asked about Rice's status in the, uh, the programs. That's when he said, yeah, so there's no real participation other than by Zoom, so he'll, he'll participate in that. But other than that, we don't have anything going on here that he would be involved with. So to answer your question, he's participating on Zoom. And again, just a reminder on this, it's voluntary. So as we go forward, that's another part of it. Patrick Mahomes said that he has been working with Rasheed Rice throughout this offseason. And he said, quote, I'm sure we'll continue that work as the legal process plays out. And then Andy Reid was noncommittal about what would happen whenever there is work in Kansas City for Rasheed Rice to potentially um, participate in, saying that they'll let the law enforcement people uh, pan out there and we'll just see where everything goes. Let the process take place. So that's Andy Reid and Patrick Mahomes talking about Rasheed Rice yesterday. Nate, with that as the baseline, anything else jump out to you from, from that section in particular? And then, Seth, you can tell me what you think. Obviously, it's not, not new legal elements, but just how the team's handling this now with official word on it for the first time. Um, as Seth has said before, um, maybe this all concludes with some form of a plea agreement. Um, who's to know when that may be? Um, but really, for the next few weeks, he'll be on his computer 
uh, taking meetings with the coaching staff. Obviously, Andy Reid, uh, offensive coordinator Matt Nagy, uh, wide receiver coach uh, Connor Embry to go over scheme evaluations and then some of the stuff that they're going to try to implement or at least test out during the offseason program. Now, that's interesting because in May, they go from virtual, you know, the classroom in essence, John, to the, or excuse me, Josh, to the, I got too many names in my head now. You, you gave me two it, fake names on purpose and then one wrong name on accident. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Again, professionals we are. Um, but what's interesting, Joshua, is Thank that you. it will go from the virtual classroom to on the field and application uh, in May. So uh, the official, uh, and people can bookmark this, but the official OTA practice, the first one is, I believe, May 20th. Um, but there will be some uh, sort of training regimen, some strength and conditioning, type stuff before then, um, which obviously could require you to be in Kansas City at the facility as well. Um, we don't know what's going to happen uh, quite with the legal situation um, because, I mean, I don't know if this is going to go uh, to trial. Uh, who knows about that? But in essence, uh, the NFL will suspend him at some point. Um, I know there's been some discussions about that as well. Uh, he could theoretically be in Kansas City next month, but that kind of comes into Seth's uh, expertise where it's like, how do prosecutors or the police department feel about him maybe being in another state given uh, his legal ramifications in Texas? I can comment to that. Um, the, the biggest thing is that it, it varies completely on jurisdiction. Um, he's, he's bonded out, so he's not being held. So you have some release conditions because of a couple of the things that he's charged with are felonies. Well, let me back up here for a second. It's just something, and we don't need to go too far down a rabbit hole here. The more I read about where things currently stand, the more interesting it is to me, because my understanding is that, you know, he was taken in on the warrant, but it's the warrant, not technically the charges as of yet, which is interesting. Different mm. different jurisdictions do things somewhat differently. Um, so in Minnesota, for example, um, an, an arrest warrant could be requested, but it, it, it someone wouldn't be charged until my office had drafted a probable cause, I'd approved the charging, and that's when the prosecutor looks at it and does it. What often happens when people are booked and arrested night of is they are booked on whatever charges law enforcement thinks are appropriate. And so you might have a case where, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, great or, you know, severe bodily harm versus substantial bodily harm, great bodily harm, all that stuff, right? Um, you know, we might have a situation where law enforcement might book a guy uh, for a first degree assault and saying that it's great bodily harm. But when I look at the the evidence, I say that doesn't rise to the level of great bodily harm. It's substantial bodily harm. And rather than charging out a first degree, I charge out a third degree, which by the way, would be the difference between an automatic commit for like 10 years to a state jail sentence. So the, it's just interesting to me in that a lot of the stuff made the rounds on Rice in terms of the charges, but I don't know if those are officially the charges yet because it sounds like the way it works in Dallas is that they 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 recommend the charges, they get the arrest warrant based on that, but the DA's office, and they've got the report in there, and that's what's been widely reported, as well as the reasons why. Um, it's basically alleged in the reports that at least one person had injuries that were more significant than were initially reported, which would explain the the the, the higher level of charging. Um, so th that's just something just for people to know. I, I, I don't practice in that jurisdiction. I have, if you go to my Twitter feed or X feed or whatever, um, I have X. quote, I have quote tweeted a few people that have looked into it a lot more deeply than I have. And so it'll be interesting to see what the prosecutors do with it. Once they get their hands on it, generally speaking, what law enforcement is going to do when they issue an arrest warrant or when they recommend charging is they're going to recommend everything that they think could possibly be charged. And that that just makes sense. Um, it not gives everything the that they think could possibly could could easily or reasonably be won. Essentially, that's the right. It's not their job to worry about that. Right. Right. It's, and it's, here's everything that could be covered here. Yep. Here's everything we think we saw. And what I always tell law enforcement once a case is on my desk is not their case anymore. They're a witness, a professional witness, mind you. But it's not their case anymore. It's my case, and I have to make charging determinations. And 
for those of you who don't know this, sometimes prosecutor offices and law enforcement bicker endlessly about charging decisions that are made and then dispositions of cases. Um, but what I always tell people, and I suppose I don't mind sharing this, what I always say is, if we always agreed, we wouldn't need to have both of our jobs, law enforcement and mm. prosecutors. We could just, you know, I've seen Judge Dredd. We could try that, but it's probably a bad idea. And so it's nice to have... It's nice to have multiple eyes on something because I have to worry about what I can prove beyond a reasonable doubt, not just what I think I have probable cause for. Because I generally, while I can charge things out just based on probable cause, I personally don't believe it's ethical to charge something out. And this is just me not saying, you know, this isn't a practice thing or whatever, but I personally don't charge stuff out unless I think I've got a good shot at winning it at trial, unless it's something that I just have to charge out with probable cause. You know, there are certain cases that are ugly enough that you just, you have to charge it. So that's just interesting. And maybe, well, maybe, maybe interesting is the wrong word. It's interesting to me because it means that we still might have one more um, hoop to kind of procedural hoop to kind of see exactly what charges get leveled at them. Lawsuits have been filed. I'm, I'm surprised they're only asking for a million in damages, to be perfectly honest. That sets a ceiling. One was a million. One is 10 million. Right. Ooh. That, that was originally yeah. that makes more a sense. lot of places is 1 yeah. million, but it's because right. it's early. It's saying it was exceeding 1 million. And then later the, the phrasing was something along the lines of not lower than 10 million. 10 million yes. Right. And so it, I, I've That's only one of the two plaintiffs, the one with just the one, I believe earlier was 1 million. I don't know about that right. one until that was in the star story, but. Generally speaking, personal injury cases and civil suits like that resolve. So we'll see what ends up happening with that, especially when you've got what like Rice's attorney seems to have had him doing. I do think it's worth noting that his attorney's office and him have not issued statements since the arrest warrant stuff, since whatever. I think now you're kind of in fact gathering, okay, how, what, what exactly is everyone looking to accomplish here? And that's going to color their movement going forward, I think. Um, so that's, I, in terms of where they're at legally, if he hasn't technically been charged yet, then he bonded out on the arrest warrant, then I don't even know what conditions of release he may have. Because here, by now, I would have, you know, once he was in custody, I would have had to make a charging decision while he was in custody if we wanted to hold him for the 72 hours or 36 hours or 48 hours. There's a bunch of different rules on that before you have to charge someone. Otherwise, they have to get bonded out or released. So he got bonded out. So they didn't if they didn't make a charging decision yet, I don't know what his conditions of release might be. Often with felonies, it's don't leave the state without court approval or approval of uh, pretrial supervision. Generally speaking, and we'll see what the DA's office there is like, you never know. Generally speaking, for me, if someone isn't a career criminal um, or they don't, uh, they, 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 they don't, there's not some reason to think they're a significant flight risk. If they have a job that takes them out of state, and that's what this is, then we make an exception for employment. And that's basically across the board, to be perfectly honest. So I would be surprised if he wasn't allowed to leave the state. Um, that's generally something that is is very, 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 very unusual. But again, different jurisdictions, so one never knows. But if you had to like base your like lawyerly career on it, what would you say happens next? I would say what now happens next... Break. No, crud. <laughs> we appreciate you supporting KC Sports Network by listening to our podcast. You have helped us become the highest ranked Chiefs podcast network in 2022 and 2023. And don't forget about our daily Substack newsletter, the best written analysis you can find on the Chiefs straight to your inbox every day. KCSN.substack.com. Some of you last week thought the boy got soft. Some of you thought the bit got stale. Some of you need to learn to respect the process. I also wasn't going to try to make you uh, put your lawyerly career on guessing what's going to happen in a place you don't practice on a case that you don't have all the details of, Seth. That would have been very irresponsible co-hosting. So let's talk about the other stuff going on with the Chiefs and Texas, which is including Rasheed Rice, apparently, but more about everything else going on as the Chiefs are going through this virtual process. Nate, again, this isn't... Uh, this isn't the first time the Chiefs have gone this route with letting Mahomes kind of do his thing in Texas, but it does feel like maybe it's expanded a little bit each year. Um, I don't know if there are differences this season to last specifically, um, but I find it really interesting. I think fans find it really interesting, and uh, I, I'm just like down to know what you know about how that process has gone this time and what you heard from reading Mahomes that you thought was interesting yesterday, Nate. Or should I say name? 
<laughs> that's 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 Neem Tyler appearing from <laughs> appearing from uh, Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. So <laughs> so you know, last year Patrick was very interested to see guys run certain routes, right? And this was even including uh, you know his first time really seeing Rasheed Rice. Uh, in person in a workout that was, you know, kind of around this time last year. I mean, it's it's crazy how fast time moves when I was talking to someone yesterday and I was like, yeah, it was about this time last year that Patrick was starting to inform the Chiefs of which guys I liked throwing to in the pre-draft process, um, you know, before, you know, the Chiefs finalized their draft board in essence. Um, that really hasn't happened quite as much as last year. I think Patrick is more focused on really developing a chemistry and timing with Marquise Brown, um, with getting more touches for Sky Moore. Um, I thought it was fascinating that, you know, because of where he is in his journey, mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey is not there, kids. He is, Because of where he is in his journey. He is because of where he is in his journey. Travis Kelsey is not really there's the like lead assistant to the Mahomes camp. What do you so, think it would take for like Dua Lipa to wear an only weird games hat at Coachella? Oh, come on guys. Come on. I, Don't say her name like that. And sorry, not, I just, I just went to a, I mean, it would be great. It would honestly <laughs> be great. It would be fantastic. <laughs> um, you know, which by the way, I see what you're doing. How that? Let's let's. Like, you got another album for us, Dua? You got one? Come on now. You Tucker knew what I was doing. Tuck, Dua Lipa and Patrick Mahomes are the two Time 100 yes. cover people so yes. far. Uh -huh. I needed. I needed. I need a that, I need that album. I need that summer album. Star. I need that summer album. Got to get the girls moving and grooving. Come on, come on, Dua. Let's go. Uh, if J. Cole can get this runoff going right, we can <laughs> count on you to lead us to Pop Sensation Summer, okay? Pop it's... beef would be great. Can we get some pop beef going? I don't know who they do and don't like, but... <laughs> Ariana Grande would kill people. It would be great. You... Hey, hey, Seth, if you got anything else to do for 30 seconds, now's the time. Get out. I just... Nate, I don't... I think Ariana Grande might be the most vulnerable pop oh, she, diva in a. I think she's Drake here. I think, and and that's kind of my point. Like she would have okay. to respond in a way, yes, where like I'm gonna need you to hit them falsettos, but also do it in a way that's very condescending. You know, no, that's so, fair. You, yeah, that, it's, a good, it's a good take. She, her highs would be high. High, her yes. lows would be <laughs> devastating. <laughs> Yeah, devastating. Can we, can we get uh, what's what's my girl's? I mean, I don't think she's really in the game right now. She kind of taking some time off, but uh, was it Kalani? Did I yeah, say that sure. right? Yeah, sure. Uh huh. Yeah, can we get so. Kalani? Can we get Kalani to do something? <laughs> get, you know, uh, I do love her music. It's... I want to make my Ariana Grande joke now. I don't think I can. So, uh, um, we're just yeah. uh, if you didn't see Taylor Swift wore New Heights hat yes. with Travis Kelsey at Coachella, and I that's just. I'm thinking like, hey, like, what would it take? You know, well, and maybe, it, it maybe take, it's, you know? maybe it's not, maybe we don't shoot for Dua Lipa. And if we miss Hope We Land Among the Stars, maybe we shoot for just like, hey, if you have this Only Weird Games hat, and if you meet a more famous person, you have to give it to them. <laughs> and we just try to get the, it's like the sisterhood of the traveling hat. Yeah. It, it climbs the ladder of fame. Uh -huh. And eventually Dua Lipa's wearing a disgusting 45 person worn Only Weird Games hat at Coachella. So, look, all I'm saying is it doesn't have to be uh, someone you, you think in particular. It just needs to be someone that is, you know, you would never guess. You know, I think um, <clears throat> I just learned. Does anyone today. know Billie Eilish? I'm, she, got, she does have the new album coming. Can we get? Yeah. See, now I can't say something about Billie Eilish. Oh, no. <laughs> All I'm saying is, can like, you know, there are people now um, where we're, we're, I got this is what Seth, I got this is what I feel today. like when you guys talk about basketball from before I was born. I had an email today. Uh, super friend, super fan, uh, which I mean, we just throw that around, but whatever. 
Kansas City okay. Chiefs super fan. I wonder if you got this email as well, Josh. I don't think I did get this one. Henry Cavalli? Ca- what? Henry Cavill. Yeah, Henry Superman, Cavill. The Woo. Witcher. Yes, uh, how he became a Kansas City Chiefs fan. I, I, he appeared on Rich Eisen's show. Shout out to those boys over there. Oh, dang, um, he, I did get that email. And yeah, uh, Henry. What that email? Henry is, uh, you know, uh, from across the pond. Uh, Man, oh, you're telling me there's a chance we could get Henry Cavill out of this? Henry oh, Cavill boy. is a Chiefs fan. Oh, I would fan. be elated. And big, so, big dork too. Video games and, yeah. and nerd culture and the whole shebang. Like Henry Cavill might be the one for us. Yeah, it's a five minute clip. He's he's charming. It's great. Uh, but I you know there's a, I don't I don't know Henry Cavill. There's much. a picture. Here's 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 a little piece of um ongoing <laughs> almost entirely sports lore, and then we can talk about whatever else. Sorry, Seth. Sorry that this happened to you. Um, Seth, this was totally know? this is totally my fault today. This is this 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 error g- g- goes up on my sheet, and I understand that. Um, the the former almost entirely sports group chat that me and Beards and Rudy have. Um, the avatar, like the icon for that group chat for a very long time has been a picture of Henry Cavill and Jamal Charles, uh, what? standing, standing together. Um, I will, there's some more lore on that also that I can, I'll, I'll fill you in on later, but it's just fun. It's just nice. It's just, it's as wholesome and it's, it's Superman slash the Witcher and, uh, and the greatest uh, running back in football history. So, so I, I, this is the first time I'd ever laid eyes on Henry. Don't, that's don't a great effort him. to pull me back in, by don't the way. <laughs> hey, Seth, hey, Seth, do you know Mayor Morris? Um, what, what position does he play? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> you say Sylvester Morris? Yeah. The, the, what a reference. Yeah. Oh, do you, do you know Zach Bryan? Um, I, I know he write, did Bryan. he write second Corinthians? Mm. Were there Brian's Seth. in the Bible? I guess Monty Seth. Python. Yeah, never mind. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is you just want one of those things where it's like, is that Mayor Morris with an only weird games hat? Did that would you be know nice. she was a Chiefs <laughs> fan? Did you know she listens to podcasts? You know, one of those things. That's that's all I'm saying. If we I think get- that's a great a great goal for us to have the publicist from Merritt Morris. Listen to me. I adore that woman. Get, we can get you a hat to give to her. You know, yeah, so, we can make this happen. So we can make this happen. It doesn't have, doesn't have to be pop. You know, we can, we can totally, we can, we can go, we can go uh country, you know, Southern country. Let's, let's do it. Um, but yeah, it would be amazing. We are um, not the picky ones here to no, me. No, at all. No, anybody God, famous no. shows this show, any amount of affection. I will be, I will make myself become a fan of their music. Or whatever uh, they do. You do know we could get Tucker to get Kay Adams a hat. You know That's this. true. You do know this. That's true. That's good. You do it's know a little this. in the sphere, though, because she's already like a friend of the network. Like we gotta. It's true. not as surprising as it could true. be. Uh, I can see a world in which Kay Adams voluntarily wears uh, an yes. Only Weird Games hat. Uh, but, yeah, you know. Man, I hope that album's fire, do I? I hope that album's fire. This is supposed to be a great year for music, and we're only in April. Uh, what it's you, been a, it's been a it has already been a great year for music okay so, so you're, scene, scene sorry scene. <laughs> so back to the the workout session what patrick has tried to do is really get it down to a science of uh you know brotherhood time which is dinner hang out go to the movies maybe watch some movie at somebody else's house just chill do a little cookout um you know they do a little bit of training with bobby bobby will give uh, everybody, you know, a little bit of things to work on, individualize it to some degree. Um, but, you know, they all train together. It's all supposed to be sort of fun and collaborative. And then he takes the guys from that to the field, um, you know, throw some routes. Hey, I want to see Justin Rout look like this. Hey, I want to see Sky Moore. All right, we've got two years of sample size. I, I want to just, like, he can kind of make the decisions. And then for someone like Marquise Brown, it's like, hey, man, here's how how I think about this certain route under this certain coverage. Here's the tempo, the angle I want you to take, yada, yada, yada. And then we all eat lunch. And because we're now in mid-April, we can you can take all that information. And now it's, up. you know, I've done my part. Now it's to the coaches to explain the rest of the offense um, in a full unit meeting or a individual position group meeting. So um, he's gotten really good at it. You know, hey, if you need an Airbnb, in tyler texas he knows where to go you know if you need an airbnb in fort worth we can get you we can get you we can get you some set up as as seth would say 
Well, well, Patrick, I, I kind of want to stay in the in the text in the Dallas area. They got any VRBOs in that bad boy? <laughs> I'm sure Patrick knows a couple of Verbos to go to as well. Uh, so that that's usually how it works. Yes, it's funny that Cal Coffee here says GM Patrick Mahomes. Uh, <laughs> some people have called him Coach Mahomes. I wrote yesterday in the Athletic. We just should just call it Camp Mahomes now. Um, mm -hmm. I like you know, it's, it's got it's got a lot of alumni. You know, Marquez Valdez Scantlin is no longer a part of Camp Mahomes. What does he feel? What's it like knowing that guys are running routes and he's not running routes right now? I that's something I also thought in my head yesterday. Um, does he want to come back to Camp Mahomes? Maybe run a little more routes, see if he can get his name out there in the streets. Uh, so I yeah. have a soft take on this and Travis Kelsey. Okay. With the caveat uh -huh. that grown men do whatever the crap they want to do, and I'm That's all right. for it. That's right. And you know, and you know, he he you know he locked down right now. He locked down for the spring and summer. Go ahead, Seth. I feel as though I, I think it was seeing the the this is gonna this is gonna get me blasted. I seen the 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 Amazon announcement today. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Travis Kelsey is going to host, I believe, a celebrity edition of Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader? Yeah, it's like, are you smarter than a celebrity? I don't know if I love that. With the caveat, again, do whatever you want, man. What is he? He's going to be 35 soon here. Uh -huh. Do whatever you want. And I think it's probably more important for Travis Kelsey in the offseason that he rest uh -huh. than anything else. Or that, or that he gets... Uh, rest and relaxation. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, I think the most important thing is that he gets to go be Travis Kelsey. That is my honest take, I think, but I want you to continue simmering this one, Seth. Yeah. Hey, hey, Seth. Hey, Seth. I'm just, uh, I, I, I don't know, because hey, I, hey, like, hey, I, I hear I, Tuscaloosa I, fan. I, I hear I, it. Hear, oh, oh, tell me, give me, give but, me one Tuscaloosa impersonation right now, please, Lord. I just would feel a lot better if there was like a cameo. Nope. Just a cameo. You're not gonna you know what one. I mean? <laughs> hey, no. Travis, stop by between going to, you know, from to Taiwan and Cancun and Madagascar and Europe and live in his best life. Enjoy it, man. You've worked very hard to become the greatest tight end in history. You're you're probably the most famous football player on the planet now, even more so than Mahomes. Somehow, I mean, uh -huh. that's but awesome. During, but during virtual Enjoy meetings, he just on his phone, just at Coachella, just by happening behind, like, yeah, Coach, you know, I got. Yeah, I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna I'm gonna mute. I'm gonna. Here's the you. thing. I, I just think I don't think Travis Kelsey needs virtual meetings. I couldn't hey, care less hey, about any of that. Honestly. Hey guys, hey guys uh, on May 17th, just, just so you know, on May 17th, you know who is going to be in Sweden. On May 19th, you know who going to be in Sweden. June 3rd, you know who going to be in France. July 5th, you know who going to be in the Netherlands voluntary seth <laughs> voluntary mrs tuscaloosa what well, here's ball here, here's here's what and i he's know not it, gonna be if, here he's not gonna be here okay if your body is struggling to keep up with the rigors Tucker makes a great point travis kelsey also has his own music festival in the midst of some of that yep and look enjoy life lineup was good they got a little lane for that Huh? I here's my 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 concern is this and again this is more of like a ah it worries me a little but obviously he knows his body better than I know his body there's a lot of jokes there you take it easy everyone but and again I'm trying to figure out this is again this I'm just verbally processing this in my head what I saw last year was people talking all season about how Travis Kelsey had lost a step. Now, I talked all season about, nah, he lost that step like three years ago. Let's all just calm down. He got hurt right before the season started. I think he played hurt the vast majority of the season yep. because they needed him. Here's the problem. Are they going to need him that bad again this year? To where yep. it's like, hey, we're going to need you to take 80% of the snaps again. And he's going to be like, oh, my body. And I just know... From my personal experience, being you know, the most famous man in the world, one one millionth the 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 athlete that Travis Kelsey um, is, life starts hitting different in your mid thirties, 
And suddenly things you could do when you were 29 or 30 or 31, because when it happens, it happens, right? We all remember, well, not you, Josh. You probably haven't been there yet. Nate, you're just barely getting there now. Uh-huh. I laid down Everyone, I laid down for 30, 20 minutes a day today just to try to get this like <laughs> stiffness out of my neck and shoulder. So it's getting a little close to home It for me. just doesn't quite bounce back the same. And so about, I'm just curious. Pliability, pliability. I'm just curious if this year, because last year we talked about it on the pod. We knew he was playing hurt, but every time he got hit, you could see him just like, Ugh. like it's like me getting out of like this it, chair. Like there, was a, like there was a ticker somewhere that counted down one more, and it's the yeah, total number. The of Billy hits Bob, the Billy Bob con- concussion thing from not another teen <laughs> movie. Which good lord, <laughs> Whew, that, that's a joke that. I can't tell whether that aged really well or really poorly. But anyway, I, and so I, 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 this is just a take I'm workshopping. Tight ends, generally speaking, by the time they hit Kelsey's age, are either retired or off have, a cliff. Have, have gone off a cliff or and kept playing as an okay cliff. to decent player like Antonio Gates. Antonio Gates was fine in the latter parts of his career, but he wasn't great. Or they're Tony Gonzalez. And that's and that's it, only it, Seth. There, historically, there's only one person who's been able to do it, and it is literally to, to remain Gonzalez. elite. Yes. That is Tony, and we all know Tony Gonzalez. I don't think he's eaten anything but like a vegetable in like 20 years or whatever it is. <laughs> like that man is more miserable in food. He was. He, was he looks of- like he could still go. He looks like he could walk out tomorrow and catch 70 passes for about 900 yards and five or six touchdowns. Have you seen that guy? Yeah, he looks I like have. he's in better shape than Travis Kelsey. I've been next to him. It's 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 physically imposing and very attractive. Suddenly, oh, <laughs> he is a handsome fella. So, Seth, Seth, you're a good analyst, but you're a crappy radio host. Can I help you? Because you you need a little help, okay? I yes. Listen, Travis Kelsey going around the world, traveling oh, with Taylor Swift. That's fine, I guess. If you don't love the game anymore. <laughs> do you love being famous more than you love football? Oh, God. You know, I, Seth Kaiser, I look around you and I see Nate's talking about Coach Mahomes. Right. I'm thinking about Coach Andy Reid, Travis Kelsey, Coachella. You you haven't you haven't seen Brett Veach in weeks because he's been in a dungeon looking at tape, you know? Chief yeah. North. Yeah. Um now now Seth. Here's what I can tell the Tuscaloosa fans out there. Look, this ain't spring ball, okay? And he ain't a spring chicken. But remember, he did sound out a few clips of him running on that treadmill really hard. Really hard. He, it was a couple weeks ago. He said, no, 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 I'm not retired. Uh, you know, I'm going I'm to do just fine. Hey, like, I'm, you know, you see me running up the, the ramp in a parking garage somewhere? Ah, who cares? But, like... I'm running. I'm doing that. Hey, how soon can we get that out there? Because we ain't getting any more of those clips of me doing that anytime soon. <laughs> <laughs> so while we get that, in, while we put that out on the front end, and then on the back end, could just be me and my girl swaying to the to the music. You know, just you ever want to just be watch the sun set, hear the bass, hear the lovely guitars, and just. Hold your girl down, I'm telling you. Just sway it back and forth. Say, yeah, baby, you want another drink? Sure. I mean, come on. You want me to run an an eight? uh, A what, an eight? I want to run an eight, coach. (laughs) Voluntary. (laughs) Voluntary. You want me to do the long drive drill? Oh. Oh. Now, and again, this is, I, this is. You want me to punch Jack Cochran in the head? I'll be there. (laughs) Yeah. yeah. (laughs) What? It's and uh, that's part of why I think he was so miserable in training camp last year because it's harder to get in shape at 34 than it was at 33. And you got some rookie named Jack something or other getting in your face. So then you punch him in the helmet, which, by the way, dude, you're in your 30s. Don't hit people wearing a helmet. Like, come on. That is. That, Our on. Mr. Perfect here's here to tell yeah, Charles if, Kelsey how to uh, live. I mean, look, who's to say we haven't. <laughs> look, put this together... is worth millions. Oh, 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 oh. Who, who's to say we haven't made you know 
friendship bracelets and then a few hours later push the guy in a helmet i mean who's to say we haven't done that <laughs> he, he contains so, multitudes and we we know that definitively we the do issue, and, though is is seth if they don't get travis kelsey some help it's gonna be another long year the good news is I don't think he's reading it because he's going to music festivals with the most famous woman in the world, but I'm six parts deep of the Know Your Draft Crush series in the Chief in the North newsletter. Yes, if you want to support this man who says, I don't think Travis Kelsey loves the game anymore, you can Come support on, him for $12 that is gonna a year. going to get out there. I'm going to get tagged. And they actually respond to stuff on New Heights. I'm going to get dragged into oblivion no. by... No. Oh. How dare he should be? He should be looking at film. You know what he should be doing? He should be coaching up Irv Smith Jr. That's this is a not very the soft take. This I'm is just not like the leader. A cameo. I chose a okay. Cameo. I pay for season tickets. I Your pay body for can't function on 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 Budweiser and tequila at thirty four. Trying to win it's a three just, it's just different. Irv Smith needs to get in the lab with Travis Kelsey. Okay, does he still do tight end union? Where is that? Is that in Memphis? Where is it? I don't is that know. Again? I don't if, know. Hey, Seth, if he skips tight end to you this year, I'll join you for some percentage okay. of that soft take. Cause that I'm like, that I'm like one like percent. I just he looked miserable last year, and my hope is not my hope. It sounds bad to say it that way. My hope is that was just injury induced. But I like felt bad for him, like especially when you'd go live and you'd watch him like just kind of jog to the sideline, just like. Oh. <sighs> Uh, it's kind of like the last time I wrestled my now 18 year old. Like, sure, yeah, I lifted him over my head and body slammed him onto the couch, and he was super impressed. And I, of course, at the time, you know, just like, what? What? Do something, you know? And then, like, he left the room a little while later. I was like, honey, please hold me up. Then, then Isabel came in and pushed you over like a, <laughs> like a like Tom and Jerry. Style. Well, with Isabel, she actually took one of those, you know, police batons from the 80s, flicked it out, and went for my <laughs> knees. So, and so I just, I, I, again, it's a very, 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 very soft take. Do all of those things. It's such like a once... soft take that you took my minute-long segue to just absolutely your your sub stack. And you're like, no, actually, I'd like to go back and talk about Travis Kelsey. Hey, I, I'm just, I'm, I know I'm, I feel like I'm going to get dragged. And I haven't gotten dragged in a minute. Well, mm, not. Seth said Seth said something he hasn't doesn't think that Look. every single person on the internet's gonna enjoy. It's very <laughs> hard for him. Hey Seth, all you gotta know is last year, New year. I kept hearing it like repeatedly about the idea that like, well, I don't know, guys. My job is to research, analyze, write things down, be ahead of things in some degree, report, and the data tells us this is the last great year. And yeah. everybody got upset with me. So look, if he doesn't have a great year. In 2024, like we'll blame Taylor the, Swift. It's how the human body works. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry. I'm really bad at finishing people's sentences. <laughs> it's how the human body works in a violent sport where you're pretty much guaranteed to get hurt. Well, um, and they're like, and you've got these 200 pound guys because they're 50 pounds lighter than you diving at your legs constantly. That has to be unbelievably annoying. Like, I can't even imagine living that life. But yes, he needs help. And Josh, your segue was unbelievable. I'm sorry. Troy Franklin, know your draft crush. What do you want to know, my friend? Is he good? <laughs> do it yourself. I did my job here. You talk to um, talk. So Troy Franklin is an interesting guy to review because he's kind of a little more controversial, especially after the combine. He didn't have a good combine. Um, here's my soft take on on Troy Franklin. Could you, you like get hard for once, please? <laughs> God, I am tired of it. As someone who said they were coming out of their trousers last episode, I, I, I look forward to this. <laughs> So, do you hear, oh, guys, I got you, I got you, okay? Do you like Brian Thomas Jr.? Yes. Yeah, I do. Can I interest you in the Kmart Blue Light special, Brian Thomas Jr.? It's kind of how oh. I felt reading the story, so not as much. I, I, can I get oh. Kmart Blue Light prices? What's the Kmart? <laughs> I think so. Kmart. Well, the Kmart, the well, it's a Blue Light special. It's uh, I suppose Kmart like yeah. That's what I'm saying so it's Kmart that, think, was I know, we know I've been what to a Kmart. I think some of our audience probably has. He was a really good paint to paint runner with Jason Kidd. Is is what I think Kmart hey. stands for. So here here's the thing. When I say 
your discount Brian Thomas Jr. I really like Brian Thomas Jr. Being a discount Brian Thomas Jr. is not an insult necessarily. In fact, if it's 32 and Troy Franklin's there and Lad McConkey's there, that'd be a tough call for me. Okay. Um, because you know what Troy Franklin does? He separates. He separates shallow, intermediate, deep. That guy separates. He separates a lot. He's really quick. He's got just enough speed to get, get behind defenders, stack them up, threaten down the field. He can separate on your quick little slants. He can separate on your whip routes. He can separate on your digs, your curls, your comebacks. You know, what kind of route you want him to run? He'll separate on it. You know, He's Seth, a good route runner. He plays receiver. Does he receive the ball? ball well many times frequently now at times will a cornerback run right through him going for the ball yes which is what happens when you weigh as much as my 15 year old okay <laughs> and that's <laughs> shout out to mason he's testing for his black belt here in two months anyway so he's going to by the way take over my house i've seen some of the kicks he's doing he's going to eventually knock me out <laughs> And it's going to be really yeah. embarrassing. So just Let so know you know, do a podcast. one day, yeah, what, one day if it's Mason sitting here, it's because he conquered. On, yeah, one seventy six. Now he's Brandon. claimed he had the flu or something, and he actually weighs like one eighty five. I am skeptical of this. Did it look like I, that on I, tape? Yeah, he no, no, he he looks every bit of one seventy on tape. Where it's like you are a thin man, and that's okay. I wish I was a thin man. I am not. But here's the deal: everything you think about Brian Thomas Jr. Take somewhere between 80 to 90% of that. Give that to Troy Franklin. There you go. And so that's, if you're someone who would want to trade up for Brian Thomas Jr., it's like, what if you could get someone who can do a lot of those same things almost as well? And so I could see it. And this this doesn't sound like a, a, a rave, but he separates. He's not a contested catch guy. He's not. But what he can do when he's down the field, he can run underneath the ball. He can make your guy look more accurate than he is. More and more, especially as I'm watching these college receivers, I am more and more willing to jump on board the train that deep ball accuracy is a wide receiver stat. People have been saying that for years, like, like about Tyler Lockett. Like Russ Wilson throws a beautiful deep ball, but you know what helps? When Tyler Lockett can track it running, you know, looking over his shoulder and just perfectly run it down to the exact right spot. Wow, he threw it to the right spot. It's like, well, no. And we talked about this in the Thomas review. Well, no, he ran to the middle of the field to go get it. Like that was a terrible throw. He made it look great. DK Metcalf does that too. Russ Wilson downgraded his life a bit, but you know, so I, I like Troy Franklin, his functional strength spooks me and that's going to freak out Chiefs fans because of what's happened with Sky Moore, but he's quicker than Sky Moore and he's a better route runner than Sky Moore and he's got more deep speed than Sky Moore, but man, if guys get their hands on him, that worries me a little bit. Now, they have a really hard time doing that at the line of scrimmage. His releases are excellent. He's a polished player. He, but you know, Sky Moore's releases were excellent. Can you, but he, the difference, here's the differentiating factor, I think, that makes me think Troy Franklin can succeed where Sky Moore has not so far. Sky Moore's not quick, right? And that's a problem when you're a small receiver. You got to be jitterbug quick. You got to be able to get away from the bad people trying to touch you. I actually really like closing on that. And Troy I Franklin can should. get away from the bad people trying to touch him. The the one thing, and this you you did the work on this. Uh, my work was reading your work on it. But by like it's like the second section or whatever. I was I was feeling myself drifting in a direction that I always love when it feels like we end up on the same page. Cause I feel like I've, I feel like I have gained more than the effort I have put in, which is where you say, but his acceleration, similar to his speed in this way, it's, it's pretty good. It might just be good. Yep. But it doesn't jump off the screen at you. And I had kind of gotten to that point. Be like, I'm kind of waiting for the thing that makes people love Troy Franklin. What's the trait that makes you say this guy, he'd be worth it at 32. He'd be worth it at, 40 where, where depending on where your ranking is for him i i think that if the the sky more adjacent issues which i didn't think about until you know getting to that point like, oh okay yeah we've talked about that being an issue for sky more for a long time the separation is very very different because of the quickness he does get away from people and that's cool but nothing 
popped off to me and that's yeah. super vibes based i am here to vibes translate on on receivers brian thomas in particular he, he's got what i want to see jumping off a screen from a wide receiver to me troy franklin didn't do that for me i think ad mitchell did a little bit Nate, how how is that playing into how you're viewing this and also how the Chiefs are viewing their receiver prospects? Because uh, Seth said he's not a contested catch guy, and I put a gold star by his name. I was like, that's a Chief. Just do it because they don't care. <laughs> did, you know that, did you know that there's a cornerback from the Mason Dixie, below the Mason Dixie line who <laughs> doesn't have an interception in his entire college career? And I said, son, I know where you're going. <laughs> you're going to have incredible coverage and never <laughs> no, pick off a pass. No, nope, never. <laughs> We ain't worried. We, hey, hey, we worried about stops. We ain't worried about turnovers. <laughs> stops. Uh, which now I need to find that player uh, who who played college below the Mason Dixie line. Um, it is fascinating to me that in the Beast, uh, another resource that you can use from Dane Brugler right. with the Athletic, is he has Troy Franklin r- ranked twelfth, which is a bit surprising amongst the amongst receivers amongst the receivers, um, because I think he's probably more in like the eight, nine, 10 range. I don't know if I would put him 12, but again, uh, Dane has been doing this a lot longer and he's actually looked at the tape a lot more uh, than me. Uh, to Seth's point, um, I do agree that he's polished. I do think he can separate in the middle of the field, uh, which could give a very nice high low with the potential of like Rasheed Rice underneath. Um, Travis Kelsey's still taking a, a good amount of attention. You could have Hollywood be your deep guy, and that yep. way it leads to Troy Franklin sort of owning the, the the intermediate area of the field, whether that's you know the Justin Watson corner routes or more of the the deeper digs. Um, so I, I do see that he can he can be functional. Um, you know, it's the that's little not th- the word you're looking for in the first round, though. Right, he, he's right. receiver eight in the KCSN draft guide, for what it's worth also, which would put him right between the Texas guys. Yeah, I, I think I would have him eighth, ninth, tenth, somewhere in there. Um, functional, uh, could be productive. Um, is he going to block his tail off? Yeah. Will it matter if he tries? Right. Yeah. I, he, I, I, he may want to block as much as he can. He could probably block about 185 pounds, and I'm thinking he's not going to have all of that with him. Well, again, <laughs> I just want to ask. These are like the small questions that you ask really towards the end of like a draft evaluation period yeah. where you're like, okay, can he run block? Okay, can he play the multitude of positions that we like to have our receivers be interchangeable? There's some yeah, about that. Uh, he. You know, to Seth's point, I'm reading some of the, the the reports now, but like inconsistent anticipation in coverage and won't create uh and won't create interceptions by jumping passing lanes. So there's there's some interesting stuff. Um mediocre recovery speed in terms of getting back to the ball once he's in a position to be beaten. Uh that's that's interesting. So I mean there's there's a lot of things where can he read the coverage well? Will he separate? You know, that's you're gonna find out basically in the NFL, which right. is like why the draft is so hilarious. It's like, well, we're gonna find out the NFL. That'll be great. What yeah, Seth, there's like one clip where he puts a linebacker in a horrible, horrible position. Yeah. I, I do you have any idea who that linebacker was? Was that and I'm trying to see what was that against tech? I'm I trying to figure out see against, where that I think that was, was against tech. Red. Yeah. And it's like um, that guy, that guy's probably not, you made the point, I think, that like mm-hmm. it's a similar look to what he might see in the NFL level, but that guy's probably not the one that you're just absolute. I guess it could have been Oregon State also if it was orange. I don't know. I'll oh, it's it. Oregon State. It was Oregon State. <clears throat> probably not an NFL caliber yeah. player. So, right, yeah. but, so but it is a, it is the type of zone drop that you're going to see where where they count on linebackers to stick with them for just a minute. And the point there was the way he set him up. But yeah, it's I mean, it's, it's nasty. You know, it, yeah, it's great. But is that the uh, is that reflective of of what you want to see? Like, is that reflective of what he'll see at the next level? And that's where Nate really delved into something here. They've they've got Hollywood Brown who they like. I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that Hollywood Brown has a great season in Kansas City and gets signed long term. Mm. I don't think they have a problem with signing someone to a good sized receiver contract. I just don't think they're going to top of the market it like very top of the market it. That that would be kind of my guess. 
Um, and if that's the case, then you want someone who compliments him best. And Troy Franklin might not be that guy because, you know, again, it's like, yeah, I guess he could be your guy, but then you have Brown be kind of your deep guy more often. But Brown works best deep and intermediate, and he right. can work all three levels of the field. So it's like you're once again, who's playing X? Who is lining up on the line of scrimmage on the boundary as your pure deep threat guy? That's not necessary. Brian Thomas Jr. can do that. Troy Franklin did it in college maybe can do it as a pro and that's a tough thing at mm -hmm. the very end of of and that's the problem when you're picking at 32 because boy if they were picking at 15 life would look very very different yeah yeah it, it, it so would and again one of the things we're all gonna realize over the next few days um when i just think Chiefs fans as a whole us in the media <laughs> it's really hard to stay at 32. I think learning from what they learned last year and the understanding of where the pockets of players that sort of fit them and you give and you get decent value staying at 32 is going to be really, really hard. So then it comes back to our buddy Alec Lewis, who tells you to trade down and taking Troy Franklin at 40 or 44 it's a lot different than 32. And I think, you know, I like the lab McCocky tapes. What? McConkey. McCocky. How are you saying? I, I, I like the lab McCocky cakes. <laughs> Can we get them at 48? <laughs> like, you know, I mean, so there's going to be, you know, and I'm just sort of projecting all these things, but like, I think what the Chiefs are trying to figure out and, um, I think Brett Veach is talking on Thursday in his annual pre-draft press conference. He will undoubtedly say many true things during that. Uh -huh, undoubtedly. <laughs> I mean, welcome to smoke screen season. I could you know what we me. really like is the defensive tackles in the you first know, round. You know, I Ooh, could tell you nothing. the truth, but I could tell you the truth wrapped within a lie. Everybody knows we could use receivers, and guys, I'll shoot you straight. Those big-bodied, contested catch guys that can win on the outside, we love all that of them. That Keon Coleman about. fella. Whew. Oh, buddy. We that would be trading up and We're kind of here just for that. Just by the way, it would be funny if they if they drafted Keon Coleman. I would laugh. Now, I don't think he's a great fit for what they like, but, man, that would be funny. Like, I would just be like, so we really don't know you at all, do we, Brett? Like, we we have no idea what you might do next. Hey, and guys, I, don't, I don't know. You know. In one draft, I may have wanted to trade up to get, you know, Zay Flowers. And in another draft, I may want to trade out of 32. Uh, so all this tells me is that there are functional players at 32. Does that get anybody's wowzers in their trousers? Does that, <laughs> does that get anybody ready to unzip? The answer is probably not, which the probably tells you teams aren't going to help you trade up so you're going to have to right. over extend to trade up or are that, you my, be... i tell you what my trousers don't care for that either yeah and, and do you want to extend yourself to where let's get more second round picks versus trying to move up in the first round i think that's what i think that's how people should sort of uh have that in their frame of mind you know this time next week um because staying at 32 doesn't really promise you anything great you know what's only a little worse than than having the uh, the Dolphins first round pick if you can if you can get the Atlanta Falcons second round pick. I guess Falcons right now. Never mind. I don't mean to disrespect our Lord and Savior Kirk Cousins, but like <laughs> if there's a, if there's a team that's that's looking to rebuild and they want to pay a little premium in the future, say hey, you give it give me a second rounder in 2020. We're all, listen. The Chiefs are already working in the future draft picks right now. Try to Wait find a bad team to get it. Trade up to eight and grab Rome. Let's just get. Are you let's just, crazy? And let's well, wrap up this edition at the hour and eight minute mark here. Now we're not going to have time for off season lessons, and it looks like we're not even going to have time for an existential crisis about the fact that Patrick Mahomes is just literally human, like literally He's, a human being. That sort of sent Seth into a bad place today. Hey, uh, but hey. Seth spent a lot of time talking about why he thinks Travis Kelsey's falling off. Right. And uh, so we're out of time. In fact, we're ten minutes over. So you can advocate for trading up to eight later. Or you could have done it on the show two episodes ago when we talked about the Chiefs trade up or trade down strategy at wide receiver. Either one, you know, either one of those times would be appropriate. I think he's more like Joe Montana than Tom Brady when it comes to the 
discussion of retirement and how his career potentially could end. I mean, to be fair, Joe got kind of knocked out of the league a little. Seth, earlier you said you thought he was more of an Andrew Luck type. Oh, gosh. That is not true. <laughs> that is... That yeah, is, you said you said. Let me read the text. You said Patrick Mahomes is kind of Andrew Luck type, and Travis Kelsey doesn't play like football anymore. Oh, that weird. is Seth Kaiser. I am just I I I am a father figure. I worry about Travis. That's all. I don't want him to be so, so like brave. sore. 